Welcome to the Cabin Boy Hits Wallcast. It is the end of the year, and I have wrapped up pretty much all my projects for 2019. The last one was a talk for the Toronto Knitters Guild, and I did it last Wednesday at the University of Toronto. And there was probably around 80 people, 80 to 100 people that showed up, and it was it was fantastic. It was in a auditorium that uh, had stadium seating. And I wasn't sure what to what to expect. They did provide me with layout of of the theater prior to, um, but what I didn't expect were the attendees. I didn't uh, for knitters guild. You'd expect accomplished knitters or all various levels of knitters. I just wasn't sure, and I wasn't sure. I knew a couple of people belonged to Toronto's Knitters Guild. I used to be a member a couple of years ago, but I didn't go to any of the sessions. Um, so anyway, I I was there. Showed up. I had a trunk show before and afterwards, which was great. Uh, and then I gave my talk on the history of knitting in Canada. And each time I do it, I go down different, different rabbit holes, and because there's so, so many stories to talk about. But um, what I wasn't expecting was uh, the number of designers there, and um, one of my knitting idols showed up, and. Uh, I was I was really excited for that, um, and so basically, this is this is what happened. So I get there, and uh, I see a bunch of people, friendly faces that I wasn't expecting, and so one of them, Carla, who runs uh, owns the a needle a needle pulling thread magazine, uh, which is a fantastic magazine, and and you know kudos to her. This magazine's been around for a number of years now, and seems to be getting bigger and bigger. It has a uh, both hard copy and online presence. And so she's really done a phenomenal job with that magazine. Um, Stephanie Aaron was there. Stephanie Aaron, you probably know her sweater. She's a crocheter. And if you went to Rhinebeck, her sweater uh, grabbed so much attention. It was one of the most popular sweaters there. So it was one that had lightning bolts down it. Uh, it's phenomenal. So it's exciting to see her there. And um, Michelle Porter was there also. Michelle's had a, uh, and she came up to talk to me as well, which was which was nice. Um, she had a design in Vogue, um, September 2019 magazine. Um, so that was nice. And then uh, my idol was is um, one of my knitting idols anyway is is Kirk Dunn, and Kirk is is phenomenal because 
he brings a completely different lens to knitting. He studied with Kaf Fassett, or he was an apprentice with him. Um, he manages to mix um, theater with, with knitting. Um, he's also doing some phenomenal things with, with knitting. Um, he has these stained glass pieces that are absolutely beautiful. And he's been on Canadian Broadcasting Company, CBC Morning Show. He's, uh, it's easy to find him on there. I'll put links to it. But when I saw him there, I've, I've, I've communicated with him through Instagram, but I've never actually met him. And so I was asked to provide a, um, a gift because they have raffles and I, I, you know absolutely I was, I was I was really happy to be asked to do that so I have I've got these little boxes that look like Timbit boxes um, uh, or donut boxes and I put two skeins of yarn in um, and they drew a name and it was Kirk Dunn who, who, who got it so when you imagine this there's 80 people there two guys out of, out of 80 um, and Kirk is the one who ends up winning so he went down picked that up and then after my talk he came down and I was talking to a woman um, as I was selling my yarn and she was telling me a bunch of stories so he patiently waited on on the right side of her uh, I guess on the left side of her it was my right side um, so I was watching him through the corner of my eye and then finally when my conversation wrapped up he said he was buying a skein of yarn to, to make some socks and so I was thrilled so not only did he get the the yarn and the gift but he also came back to buy yarn as well so boy, what an honor for me I was I was really excited and I was I was so happy to to finally meet him as well and um, when you meet certain people or when you meet people you know you've, the people give off a, a vibe of, 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 or the energy that they have he is the first thing I thought of when I when I shook his hand was there's this comfort and an openness that, that ministers have when you when you meet them, uh, some really good ministers. And so when I shook his hand, you know, that's I felt that immediately. It was really it was really interesting. Um, so anyway, that was I was I was definitely um, fanboying out then. So I was I was really excited. But you know, I joined. I ended up joining the guild, and and I'm glad I did. You know, I did a lot of thinking about it prior to showing up. Um, and just thinking about, you know, what is the purpose of the guild and, um, you know, why would I want to join? And I think for me, I kept coming back to the same thing. And it's community. It's a sense of community. And this guild definitely has has that. You know, the, the people were so nice. And one of the things I absolutely loved about the evening was uh, the questions that were coming up when I was giving my presentation. I had some fantastic questions. They were all great questions. They were, you know, directly related to the topic, or some of them were, were off um, and, and just out, still within the knitting world, um, but outside of the conversation. And it was fantastic as well. Uh, you know, really, uh, there were seasoned people in the room asking fantastic questions. Um, I, I loved it. One of the questions I found very interesting was we started talking about gender and uh, and then it morphed into um, you know have I experienced any type of homophobia in in the knitting world and you know I, I, w I went back and I was talking about you know the I guess the perception of men who knit um, and the stigma attached to that and you know, personally, I've, I haven't experienced any of that. I did share a story, though, which I've shared in, in prior uh, cast, which was more focused on my gender. And, and I think it was actually the opposite of homophobia. Um, when I tried to join a knitting circle, this is a yarn store in Toronto, um, and they wouldn't let me in. There was about 30 women. Um, based on the conversation and um, some of the questions that were asked to me when they did talk to me, uh, I got the sense that they definitely pigeoned me or identified me as, as male and straight. Um, and I think that's kind of why I wasn't allowed to have enter enter their circle and have any conversation with them or engage with them at all. So, uh, you know, I found that a really interesting question. Um, and, and there were more questions like that as well. So it was it was it was it was a fantastic evening. What a way to, to end the year. Uh, so Toronto Knitting Guild, uh, thank you so much for inviting me. I had a phenomenal time. You know, it also had me 
think about guilds um, going way back. And and I covered part of this when I was going through the history of knitting in Canada. Because when I talk about that story, I go uh, beyond beyond when knitting first arrived in Canada. Because I think it's really important to talk about all of the activity that was going on in the Middle East and then migrating over to Europe. And when it hit Europe, that's where you know, I started to talk about the knitting guilds. And knitting guilds back then, when we look at the 14th century, knitting guilds were held by men. And so it was, a, it was a profession. Knitting was a profession. And so the Knitting Guild was there, it was established to bring in uh, men and train them and have them highly skilled because the more skilled that you have your knitters, the more money you can charge for your garments. And these garments would be selling, trading all over the world um, or sold to um, aristocracy or extremely wealthy people. And so if you wanted to be a knitter, you wanted to get into the guild, you wanted to get into a good guild, you had to apprentice. The apprenticeship would take three years, then you're shipped off for a couple of years, uh, two to three years uh, abroad to learn skills there. Then you come back, and uh, once you come back, so you're off, you're a journeyman, you're traveling around, picking up various skills, coming back, and then if you want to be a master knitter, there's a test for that. And you had to knit a bunch of um, garments or uh, a rug, um, and it was highly complex, highly, highly, highly skilled. So, you know, there was a lot of discipline around that. And so that's, that's how the Knitters Guilds started. And, you know, that's a piece of history that I think is, is interesting. And, um, and then it's equally as interesting as how that morphs out. Um, and then the Knitters Guilds have evolved and changed over time um, and have served various purposes. And I, I will tell you that the Knitters Guilds that I'm familiar with um, close to Toronto or outside of Toronto are very active and um, and they're great they, they've got a they're a great resource for people um, camaraderie and it's you know it's just a, it's, a, it's just a wonderful environment to be in so I'm looking forward to 2020 and uh, going to sessions on a monthly basis to hear people talk and um, check out yarn I also want to do a special shout out to feisty fibers thank you so much for helping me um during the talk and during the sale um, at the Toronto Knitters Guild. I wouldn't have been able to do it without you. So I appreciate all of the effort that you did. Because when the booth got really busy and people were buying yarn, you were there, you jumped in and, and were helping me out. Uh, and that was fantastic. That was that was super, super nice of you. So I, I really appreciate that. I also want to cover a couple of highlights for 2019. And I'll break them up into groups. So the first thing was the... Uh, classes that I taught in 2019. I taught a ton of classes, and I taught the, at the um, on farms, in, in yarn shops, and in festivals. And they all brought their unique charm to them. They, they, I think the you know some of the crazy times that we had uh, at some of the festivals. Um, and I remember at, at the Picton, especially teaching uh, an indigo class. The class was fantastic, um, and being in a horse barn with a metal roof and having the rain, probably the hardest rain we had all summer, come down on the metal roof and trying to teach the class or yell to them so they understood what I was talking about. Fortunately, the, the, the rain didn't last too long, but you know, it, was, it was a fun session. Another session I had was at Kawartha Yarn Festival and I plugged in my um, heaters and um, blew the fuse. So, and I was teaching a, a, a dye class, so it's a little challenging when you don't have heat to do that. But you know, everybody was adaptable and super nice. And then the the four classes that I taught at Twist um, was was fantastic too. In you know, to a group of people who um, spoke both French and English, but it was that was a very interesting experience and a fantastic experience as well. So I, you know, the teaching teaching on the farms. You know, I was teaching in the pouring rain. Um, at Topsy Farms, but it's still, you know, the, the people at Topsy Farms are so fantastic um, and accommodating, and I had a great time there as well. So, you know, I re re had a fantastic time teaching. I think this year, you know, I've, I've made some commitments, or the, this coming year I've made some commitments, uh, which I'll talk to, to I'll probably talk about in the new year. Um, I'll be teaching in various, various places around 
Uh, vending. Vending was something that I got into this year, um, selling my yarn. And, um, you know, it went quite well. I was I was really happy because it, what it, the joy I get out of it is being able to talk to people about about yarn and, and educate them um, yarn and, and talk about the natural dye process. I really like that. It's I, I feel that so rewarding. Um, selling yarn is also nice as well, but um, I really love the interaction with people. So that was a that was that was something that I really enjoyed. Another highlight for me this year was participating in two art shows, two art exhibits, and with Maison de Poivre, and it was fantastic. The first one was a fiber-related um, exhibit, and so I created a piece that was seven feet by five feet. I've talked about it in prior episodes, um, and I strapped it right to the pipes of the of the uh, gallery. And it was probably my most ambitious piece. It definitely generated a lot of discussion, um, and, and I had a fantastic time. It was it was it was great. I was very happy participating in in that show with a lot of phenomenal artists. And then the second one was definitely one of the highlights for me. Um, it was the project um, Mia Jock, and I asked for jocks to be knit from people all over the world, and I had. All genders participating in it and it was fantastic it was huge so uh, i've got i brought some as well to to show off because the the work was was absolutely fantastic the concept you know was was very interesting to me because it was just challenging people's perceptions of of masculinity the overall exhibit was called our exhibition was called um, positive masculinity and so i thought by introdu introducing crochet or knit jock into um, an area that is uh, full of uh, masculinity and, and jocks, um, you know, bringing something that's intricate like that into it um, you know, helps helps us look at uh, this from a different perspective. And so I, I brought a bunch of them I wanted to show you. So this is a bowl of jocks. And again, they came from all over the world. Here's one from New Zealand. Um, and so I basically had them, I'll, I had them up on a wall and people could, pick them up, try them on. Um, I also created a shower area um, and they could go into behind the shower curtain and try them on and people did. Uh, there's a lot of pictures, people posted them on the internet. If you go to a hashtag Amaya Jock, you'll see some of the people wearing them. I'm also going to, at the end of this video, um, I made a little video of it and I will post that as well so you can see the, the jocks that were in it. Uh, but there was, this from the United States, um, this is from Toronto, from a great designer in Toronto. Uh, this is from the United States as well. So they just, you know, they go on and on. Uh, some of them uh, were extremely popular. Uh, this one from New York was very popular. Um, this one is from Hamilton. Uh, again, they're from all over the world. Uh, another um, local Parts are just down the street from me, down the down the road. Um, this is another one that was got a lot of popularity because of the it was so uh, furry. Um, this another one. And they go on and on and on. They just um, keep piling up. But it was uh, there was a lot to choose from. And it was, I couldn't believe, I was overwhelmed by the number of participants that um, wanted to participate in this, in this project. This one is from Ireland. And got some more. This one was already in an exhibit. Uh, this one is from Denmark. This one was also very popular to, to, to try on. So and, it, and it's great too because people asked for asked me to give them this one's from Toronto. Uh, people asked me to give them um, a pattern. And my preference was not to give them a pattern, but if they were really stuck, I would, because uh, it was nice to see people come up with their own ideas. And, and I wanted them to be, I didn't want them to all be uniform. I wanted them to look um, completely different. So 
Uh, this is also from someone from Prince Edward County. So it was great. I had a fantastic time. Uh, the owners of the gallery were talking about taking this on the road and, and going to other galleries with it. I was thinking about doing that in 2020. Um, I'm just going to go in over my schedule now to, to figure out uh, to, to put everything, um, get, every, get everything up on my calendar, but also to set priority to, to what it is I want to focus on in the, in the new year. So that was great, and, and I had a fantastic time. And for all those people who participated, thank you so much. Um, and when I say participation, not only knit or crochet jocks, but showed up. Uh, put them on, uh, took pictures. It was it was a lot of or reposting. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Thank you. 2019 was was fantastic. I had a a lot of ups, uh, a lot of a lot of positive things go on. I think I had a lot of learnings as well. And one of them was when I uh, was vending at one of the festivals, I made a mistake of um, teaching and vending at the same time. And I guess what I mean by that is um, the mornings, when you go to festivals, the morning's always the busiest. And so uh, I was teaching that morning and it was only one day. The festival was only on for one day. And so I missed all the people coming into the to, to the booth to, to talk to me. Um, so my daughter was there fending it. Um, I didn't prepare her for it because I didn't even think about it. She did a phenomenal job, though. She's um, definitely more averse than I am with respect to to nature and botanicals. Um, and so I learned a lot from her. Um, you know, they wanted to talk to, to me and the dyeing process and all that stuff. And so um, I won't make that mistake again if when I'm vending and teaching, I'll make sure that I'm teaching in the afternoon so I um, don't miss people that are coming in in the morning. So that was, that was I think that was probably the most valuable thing that I learned this year. Um, but again, you know, I had a fantastic time this year and I'm looking forward to 2020. 2020 is already shaping up to be a, a really interesting year. I've got uh, a couple of patterns coming out. Um, one of them has already showcased at um, the annual general meeting for the Upper Canada Fiber Shed. And this is a project where I've partnered with a farm and um, created a shawl. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to show the picture yet or not. I, I, th I think that the pattern's coming out in March, so I'll hold off until a later episode. But um, I was, I, I had a lot of fun doing this project. And when I actually show it to you, um, I'll, I'll go through the thought process, um, the design process, and, and talk to you about that. I've also got um, another pattern that I've finished and that is in partnership with another farm and that's for fingerless gloves so i'm looking forward to getting that up and running and uh very shortly um and then i've partnered with a couple of designers and one of them is working on a luxury yarn that i have uh with kiviet in it and so i will disclose who the designer is probably in a, in a a later episode because um, we just started the, the initial process going through it and so as we get closer to March I will let you know who that is maybe in February probably February uh, and then another designer has been working with one of my yarns since I think, September um, and that will be published in a book um, shortly and I think it's shortly and then on the other side of the coin uh, I'm working with a farm in the United States, and they've asked me to dye some yarn for them. And uh, once I get that yarn dyed and the thumbs up from the farm, uh, I'll talk to you about the farm. I, I know most of you will be very familiar with the farm, so I'm, I'm really excited about that. It's nice to work both ends. It's nice to have the, the dyeing process and, and have a designer work or work with your yarn. And it's also nice to have someone send up their fiber to you and, and work on that as well. I'm really looking forward to it. And then with respect to festivals, I uh, I will be at Knit City in Montreal in March as a vendor, and I'm also one of the sponsors. And so that will be a lot of fun. I've uh, this this holiday season. I'm going to be going through um, what the what my uh, space will look like. 
and I've already gone through you know, what types of yarn I'll be bringing there. So I'll have a, uh, I'll talk about that as we get closer to to the show. Uh, but I'm really really excited about about that show. And then yesterday I heard that I got into Twist as a vendor. Um, so I'm super excited about that. Twist is definitely one of my favorite festivals of all time. So I'm really excited about that. So those are the two that I'm going to focus on this year. Um, I'll have a, I've already committed to, to uh, teaching as well. And so as we get closer to those teaching dates, I'll, I'll share that with you um, so that we're all up to speed. And then lastly, um, one thing that I have not been great at is uh, solving the, the, I guess, the solution of, of what, how to distribute my yarn. Um, I think part of it is I just don't want to overcommit in, in certain areas, but um, I have partnered with a yarn shop in Montreal, Crochet and Co, and they will be selling my yarn in the next couple of weeks. Um, so that's that's great, and they're fantastic. I, lo I love this store. Um, and then I've been doing private dyeing as well, dyeing for private clients um, all over the world, and and so that's working out for me as well. I, I, I like doing that, but uh, I've had a number of people. You know, I, I can't sustain that model, so what I will probably do is uh, I think online is is probably where I'm going to go. I'll work with select stores, um, and then I will get my online shop going as well. So these are all things I'm very excited about for for 2020. And now before I go. A couple of you have asked if I'm going to show you my woolly balls this year. And so here they are. Um, I usually put these on the Christmas tree. You know, this year I taught a couple of classes on, on, on making the balls. I usually use this pattern, the, the sheep pattern. And I haven't published it yet. So if anybody wants it, send me a note and I'm happy to send that to you. Um, anyway, here they are. Wish everyone a happy holiday and a very prosperous 2020. Take care, everyone. And I'll talk to you in the new year. Bye-bye.